It was a rather nice morning. In the sky, the sun was up, shining. In the trees, the birds were up, singing. But in a rather scruffy house, in the middle of a field, somebody wasn't up. Can you guess who that somebody might be? His alarm clock went off. Mr. Clumsy, who clapped and reached out an arm to switch off his alarm clock and knocked it onto the floor. Whoops, he said. That's the third alarm clock I've broken this week. Mr. Clumsy, as you might have guessed, was a rather clumsy foe. He got out of bed and switched on the ritual. The knob came off in his hand. Whoops, he said. That's a second ritual. I've broken this month. He went downstairs the poopman had been, and there was a letter reaching for Mr. Clumsy lying on his doormat. He picked it up and went into his kitchen. Fast things fast, he said and took a slice of bread out of his bread bin and popped it into his hoover. Oh, he thought, I wonder who this letter's from. He looked at the letter in his hand, but the letter wasn't in his hand. What was in his hand was a slice of bread. Huh. I don't understand it, he said. Where's the letter gone? Can you guess where the letter had gone? <laughs> That's right. He put the letter in the trooper uh, instead of the bread. And there it was, blowing nicely. Oops! He said, fishing a cold. Ouch! He said, dropping it. It's hot! Mr. Clumsy bent down to pick the letter up, but in doing so, he banged his father on his kitchen table, and in doing so, he fell forwards and got his head stuck in the bread bin. All of which wasn't surprising, really. As we said, he was a rather clumsy fool. In fact, he was a very clumsy fool. Actually, he was the clumsiest person in the world. That very same morning, after he managed to get the bread bin off his head, Mr. Clumsy went to town shopping. Fast things fast, he said, and went into the bank to get some money. And somehow, while he was in the bank, Mr. Clumsy, while he was writing a cheque, managed to spill ink all who the bank manager. Whoops! said Mr. Clumsy. He went into the boxes. Morning, Boxer, he said cheerfully.
and then he somehow managed to chip Hooper his shoelaces and somehow managed to fall into the butcher shop window and somehow managed to finish up with a string of sausages on his neck. What? he said. Mr. Crumbs's next call was the supermarket. Just inside the door there was a huge pyramid pile of cans of soup. Well, can you guess what happened, Sharpful? Mmm, exclaimed Mr. Crumbs. Soup would be nice for supper. And he picked up a can. Not a can from the top of the pile. Oh, not Mr. Clumsy. What? Said Mr. Clumsy. And went on his way, rubbing his head. On his way, he called in at the farm for some eggs. And some hole while he was crossing the farmyard, he managed to trip up, and somehow, as he was falling, he managed to grab who of the farmer, and somehow the poop managed to finish up in the duck pond. Splash! What? said Mr. Crumbsy. <coughs> Please, said the farmer, as we sat together in the duck pond, and in future can I deliver your eggs to you? That's extraordinarily kind of you, the Prime Minister comes to. <laughs> Who mentioned it much of the farmer? Mr. Crumbsy went who? Fast means fast, he said, and went for bath. But as he was stepping into his bath, his foot somehow managed to slip on the shoe, and he somehow managed to turn a somersault, and, and he somehow managed to land with his head in the linen basket. What? said a muffled voice. Later, he went downstairs for supper. Soup from the supermarket, sausages from the butchers, and eggs from the farm, or rather, soup from the saucepan that had boiled hooper, sausages from the frying pan that had caught fire, and eggs. <laughs> Ooh, uh, very, very, very scrambled eggs. A normal Mr. Clumsy sort of supper. That was nice. He said, leaning back in his chair. Crash! What? said Mr. Clumsy. I think I'd better go to bed. And he did. And that is the end of the story. Good night, Mr. Clumsy. Mr. Crumbsy leaned Hooper to turn off his bedside light and Hooper, what?